Today on High Now Daily, we're cooking it up in the High Now kitchen with culinary master, Chef Roy Yamaguchi. He's got the details on some of the freshest seafood you can find from Japan. Plus, how the Honolulu Museum of Art is supporting art education from our keiki to kupuna. And it's recruiting season for the United States Army. Let's see if five got what it takes. This and more right now on High Now Daily. How's it aloha gang and welcome to High Now Daily. We're kicking off this week of shows with the legend over here. We have Chef Roy Yamaguchi hanging out. Welcome in. Hey, chef. I'm still young. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> a, a young legend. But Chef, we're so happy to have you yeah, on the show. Welcome in. Always grateful uh, for you to be here. Now, I know you're very busy, so let's just get right to it. You, you okay. just returned back from Japan. Yes. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about that trip in Japan and, and what that was all about. Oh, it's a great trip. You know, us chefs, we get together. All we do is eat and drink. Go to fish markets, you know, what more fun can we have, right? So it's been a great experience just learning more about the different types of fish. Lots of species, right? 250, over 250 wow. species of fish that we're able to see over at the fish market. So that we just had a great time. That's incredible. We're looking at some pictures, Chef. So where are you guys at uh, over here right now? Obviously, there's eating, there's drinking, and eating lots of fresh and drinking. fish. We there. went to uh, Toyosu Fish Market, which is the new Tsukiji. Mm -hmm. We also went to Nagahama over in, uh, in Fukuoka and went to a great fishery over there. And just, you know, just great people learning a lot. And the, of course, the culture. I was born and raised there. Yeah. So uh, the culture there is extremely uh, and just grateful. So definitely. Stuff, All right, Chef, tell us a little bit about the group that you went with. Mm -hmm. I see that Chef Vikram over there with you. But tell us about who who went on the trip. With yeah, you. you know what? That's the first uh, criteria to, to to meet was uh, you know people that love to drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, just that kidding. sounds like I know. You know <laughs> just, just getting together, just people that love food. Chef, uh, chef Sel, uh, Sheldon Sheldon yeah. Simeon from uh, Maui, and we had a uh, chef, of course, Chef Vikram. We had Seamus, mm -hmm. um, Chef Seamus, and then we had uh, Chef Wade from uh, MW. Um, that sounds like quite yeah, the party, just, though, yeah, Chef. Just, yeah, Robin Maif from yep. uh, FET. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of great people, a lot of great chefs, and just good times. Definitely. So, welcome back home. And again, this was all about uh, getting more educated, having uh, more Japanese fresh seafood here in Hawaii. Well, you know, born and raised in Japan, I ate fish from a very young age. And the fish from Hawaii is just incredible. You know, lots of different types of flavors. Uh, some are rich, of course, firm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we talk about umami and the fish, and it's just so good. And uh, we have nodogoro right here. Yeah, so what you want to do over here with nodogoro is to even flame that so that what, what happens is after you flame it, you get a lot of that oiliness that comes from between the skin and the flesh, mm -hmm. and that adds to the flavor of the oh, fish. Man, you can just smell yeah, it in it here smells. too. Chef, what else do we have over here? Because we have a couple of different. Yeah, um, so, so, yeah. Th yeah, so, so this is kimedai, and then you have um, uh, mm -hmm. the aji over here, and of course the nodogoro, which is to me, it's a. Uh, um, Black throat um, sea perch, and it's oh, a man. great tasting fish. There's nothing like that. So it, delicious. It's, it's just nice and soft. What else we got, Chef? Hey, I, should start, I should start cooking. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's, let, let's start cooking. I'm going to get some shots of the, of the fish okay. over here. What, what are we making? So we're going to make this quick pasta right here. And then we're using this uh, wotaruika, uh, which is a baby squid. So I'm going to start by putting some garlic in here okay. real fast and some chili flakes. And after I put that, I'm going to put the uh, the squid right in there, and then, oh, it starts to pop a little bit, so you gotta be careful. And then add a little bit of sake. Ooh. And then we have good. some uh, fish fume. This is the fish stock that we made from making that sashimi right over there. Okay. So get some of that. And then I'm just gonna heat up this pasta really fast. That's been cooked for about three, four minutes already. So all we're doing now is kind of bringing it back to temp. And then after we put the liquid in here, what we wanna do is we have some chiso here. Um, I'm gonna put some yuzu in here, just for some uh, acidity. Yep. And yuzu, that's almost, it's kind of like a citrusy. Citrusy. Right? In Japan, we have yuzu, kabosu, and all this stuff is uh, very, cit you know, kind of a cross between an orange and a, uh, a lime or a mm -hmm. lemon. Beautiful. Uh, now that's all coming together. And then, Chef, what am I looking at over here? I'm going to poo-poo while you yeah, kind of yeah, pick yeah, it up some, over there. Some hotate, which is uh, scallops. Hotate. Can we just get a, uh, a look at these scallops over here? Look how beautiful this is. And I'm just going to go right 
in over here. I don't think anyone has it better than me right now. I am one <laughs> lucky dude right now. Mm. Okay, so buttery, Jeff. Buttery, Beautiful. Huh? Yep. Yeah. So um, I have some pasta here. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put some butter in here. Chef, I wanted to ask you as well. Um, last year, 2023, actually celebrated 35 years of yes. Chef Roy Yamaguchi, the restaurants, everything that you've done. Uh, what was that like kind of reflecting? No, oh, uh, just, you know, it's that amount of, of time here in the island, Chef, congratulations. Well, you know, it's the, it's the uh, journey, right? It's a journey that you take. And for me, 35 years of fun, you know, just meeting people, you know, having our guests come to the restaurant year after year. And the great thing is that, you know, they might have come with their grandparents, their parents, and now these kids, as they came when they were little, mm -hmm. they come in the restaurant with their families. And you, so, you sound like me, Chef. That's how it was <laughs> for me. I used to go, and now I'm bringing in my kids so that they can experience the, uh, yeah, the so Roy Show. Yeah, so, it's, you know, that's just, it, it's, it's just priceless. Just priceless. Awesome. All right, Chef, so we're garnishing. We're finishing up. We're, we're ready to plate. Yep. So One more time on this uh, dish, Chef, we used... Tagliatelle, this okay. is the, uh, I have some sake in there, some olive oil, some chili flakes, we have some garlic, chiso leaves, and we have some, uh, some yuzu. Ooh! Yeah. So I'm gonna just... Oh man, this thing looks this right amazing. Here on this plate. And everybody at home, I know you can't smell it, but it is smelling all kinds of ono in this kitchen right now. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. Oh, I definitely will. I'm good There's to go, some, chef? Okay, there oh, we no, go. This is a little, little fast, a little quick, you know? A little chiso there, some chives. Oh, yeah. Okay, so try that. Look at this. <laughs> Hopefully you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. Hey, you All know right. what happens on camera is that, you know, <laughs> you can always Ooh. lie, you know. Uh, nobody knows what it tastes like, so you can always lie. Oh, I, I know what good. it tastes like, let me tell you guys. <laughs> and it's, I'm just gonna burn my mouth for you guys. That's all right, this thing is piping hot. Huh? Mm. Good to go, chef. Ludicrous, always good. Delicious. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. That's going to be coming up over here in 2024. It continues to grow every year, Chef. Yeah, you know what? A lot of great events. You know, it's on mm. three different islands, Maui, Big Island, of course, Oahu, different venues for different types of uh, genres. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have a lot of great things like, um, you know, all these great chefs that come from all over the world. And, you know, they just, what we're trying to do is showcase all the great ingredients Hawaii has to offer. You know, and there's nothing, there's, there's nowhere like Hawaii. So we have abundance of produce, uh, you know, the fresh fish, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, and then we have a lot of uh, ranchers out there that are doing a lot of great stuff. So a combination of all of that stuff leads into, you know, what we're doing here. Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, like having great fish from Japan. All right, Chef, and I wanted to ask you about that because there's a special promotion taking place, right? It's gonna kick off March 8th. This is a full-blown promotion happening here in the islands where you can get some of the best of the best right. from Japan, right? So what we're gonna do in, in, in our restaurants is we're gonna use right. the hotate, which is the uh, the scallops, large scallops mm -hmm. from, uh, from Japan. And we're gonna team that up with some uh, filet uh, and some uh, some pasta, I believe. So you know we're gonna have a nice combination of flavors that's gonna, gonna be you know be able to uh, hopefully uh, make people happy. Yeah, it's gonna be taking place from March 8th to the 22nd. But there's gonna be a number of different restaurants that are participating yes. in this, and they're gonna be utilizing the fish in, in different menus and, and menu different, items. You know, right? Yeah, different restaurants will be will showcasing different products. Uh, they also have taco, which is the Japanese uh, the octopus, and some some of them might have some uh, medai. Um, you know, which is the uh, snapper. Um, and you know, like you can't beat fish like this. You know, th there's, there's so much flavors from, from the deep ocean. Mm -hmm. And you know, depending on the currents that they travel in and, and also d depending on the season, some of the seasons, you know, whether it's hot, a uh, little colder, then, then, you know, and maybe towards later of the year, um, you know, the, the fat in the fish itself starts to build up. And with the traveling and stuff, it just, the flavors just really pop out. So anybody that wants to really have great tasting fish, uh, you know, of course, Hawaii has a lot, mm -hmm. but uh, to, to get fish from Japan is, uh, is it's, it's precious, it's priceless. I gotta ask too, uh, being around so many talented chefs, such as yourself, but what was the reaction just to seeing Japanese seafood in that way? Because it kind of gets the creative juices, get you like, wow, our chefs just like, what are we gonna do with this? Well, what am I gonna make with yeah, this? Yeah, so when we were at the fish market, just lo looking at all the different species, like I said, maybe over, to, over 250 of them, all the different chefs were looking at it going like, wow, if I were to do something now, you know, I would be able to do this and do it. They're just, mm -hmm. just getting really excited about what they can do with the, with, 
you know, with the different products that they, that they were just, you know, being able to uh, grab and hold and, you know, look at it close up. So 100%. And the real winner in all that is going to be all of us here in the general public who go and check out this promotion. Mm -hmm. Again, it's taking place from March 8th to the 22nd, a number of different local restaurants participating, featuring some of the best, best Japanese fresh seafood. Chef Roy, thank you so much. And this boss is with us. Everything you make is good, Chef. <laughs> We're looking good. We're tasting good over here. Stay with good. us on High Now Daily. We'll be right back. Thanks, Chef. Thank you. All right. Mm. Good, good. That was this last. Hello and welcome back to Hi Now Daily. Joining us here in the studio, we have Mark Norseth from the Honolulu Museum of Art. I'm gonna be talking a little bit uh, about art education classes that are available for everyone, right, Mark? Keiki Tukupuna over there at the Honolulu Museum of Art. Welcome in. Thank you, Kaino. Great to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, so tell us a little bit about these art classes that are available for kupuna that are out there who are interested. Well, Joseph will be able to fill in more of the details later on. I'm personally responsible for teaching a group of people 55 and older who are interested in wa painting in watercolor, which is what I'm going to be demonstrating today. Show us how it works. Okay, I will. I'm intrigued. I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. First of all, this is an exercise that I have the students do, and it's taking an everyday object and drawing it um, and placing it on the paper in such a way that it's only in silhouette. And the okay. reason for that is we, especially with watercolor, watercolor. Come over here, check this out. And what we have over here, this looks like like a, like a, wa a water bottle or some kind of mm -hmm. spray bottle, right? Situation yep. as it, you can see over here. So it's just kind of like, this is just the outline, yeah? It's a contour drawing, there yeah. There you go. And the idea is to, of this exercise, is to first of all practice their drawing skills. Okay. But second of all is to introduce them to the idea that everyday objects are, the things around us are actually kind of interesting. And the project for them to, to do is to eliminate as much detail as possible and only rely on the silhouette of that thing for it to be recognizable. You okay. recognize it right away. Right. And so the painting part is actually gonna be really simple. And what I'm gonna do is there's part of this is a color exercise and we're gonna start by mixing a gray. But the gray I'm gonna mix is gonna be made out of the three primary colors which happen to be blue, yellow, and red. Okay. So I'm gonna take some blue on my palette here. This is ultramarine blue, 
How long have you uh, been teaching for and what made you interested in uh, watercolor? I, I got interested in watercolor as a child and uh, have been painting, essentially doing this since I was about 11. So it's been a while. So that's yellow and that's, the, excuse me, the red and the blue will make a violet kind of a shape. I'm using okay. a very earthy kind of red. I have a couple. And if I add their opposite, the opposite of blue and red, the third color is yellow and yellow is the opposite of purple. If I add that, you will watch it become neutral. So I'm gonna use one of these earth yellows. I'm gonna work that in there and you will see this begin to calm down and become a little more, i mop some of that up, a little more neutral. Okay, and I'm, I'm already go, seeing it right now. Yeah, yeah, you'll see it get a little more neutral. And, it, and then you can, and this is a great exercise to get students um, used to working with neutrals and working with washes without worrying about color. And in order to, um, to paint this, what I have them do is, um, it's a wash exercise. And washes, yeah. watercolor, they tend to run and drip, that's why we're on a uh, gotcha. horizontal surface. And I'm just gonna put flat water with a flat edge brush. I'm gonna go around that object in a couple places, and that's got a little bit of paint on it, but mm -hmm. it's mostly, and I'm not gonna fully enclose it, but I'm gonna put some water around there, and. And this is the base, uh, this is what's taking place in the class. Basically, is, we're, we're looking at an object, we're stencil, and then we're. They're drawing the opposite, okay. and in their, their goal, their objective is to try to, and I'm gonna pick up some water here. Okay. This is a nice little technique, squeezing with one hand. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna soak that up, make it go away. And then we can add color to these objects. So what I'm gonna do is get some water going in there, and then get some wash going in here. Now, as long as the water, the wet spots don't touch, they're gonna to stay separate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is skill building. Wow. Okay, so let's take some of that. How many people in the class? 15. 15 total. A oh, yeah, so it's not a tremendously big class size. It's real intimate knowledge. Oh, and, it's, yeah. yeah, listen, they have a great time. They come in so, the students come in so eager. It's a delight to see. And I really think a lot of what it is, is that um, at that point in life, they have the time. Mm -hmm. They may have always had the interest, but maybe never the opportunity. And once you get them started on some things, they just begin to uh, really enjoy themselves. Definitely lighting yeah. up in a different way. Lighting up, exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. So we can have that going, and then we can take another color. And why don't you pick a color? And I'm gonna- Okay. You can give me a thumbs up. There we All go. All right. And I give you, uh, I would give you a brush well, let me get squeeze some water out of this here. Let me get past okay. it. Okay. So it's not too messy. And what I'm gonna ask you to do- I'm gonna do my best right now. Pick out a color that okay. you like, and you're gonna just add it to that water. Oh, I like this tinge. This is kind oh, of like, like high now -y. This is like <laughs> us, this is very us, I feel. Is that picking up any paint? I think so. Uh, maybe here, I'll tell you what. Let me you know what, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break because coming up after, you're gonna see me put paint to pen to picture. Okay, stay with us on High Now Daily. We'll be right back. Thank you, thank you. You got it. Okay, there we go. There it is. Now I'm picking it up.
Aloha, welcome back to High Now Daily. You're watching Art After Dark with us, your host. No, I'm just joking. Welcome back. We're hanging out with Mark and Joseph from the Honolulu Museum of Art. Uh, and I'm putting, I'm, I'm putting the brush to it. We're, we're getting some strokes in over here. Really and uh, we are learning a little bit more about art classes that are offered over there. Uh, and Joseph, that's where you come in. Because yeah. in addition to what um, Mark is doing with our Kupuna, I mean, there's just vast. There's a lot happening, right? Yeah, we have classes from Keiki all the way up to Kapuna, like you said earlier. Yeah, this particular the program is geared for uh, adults 55 and older, the Art for Life classes. Um, yeah. Mark, oh, okay. Mark, I'm going to transition that back over to you. Thank you, sir. Good All job. right. <laughs> I'm hanging in there. So well, in, in addition to these classes, yeah, what, what, what else is offered? And, and HOMA does, I mean, really just such a great job of different events, giving back to our community. But there's people have a lot of options when they go over there. Yeah, I mean, for we've got drawing and painting. We have ceramics. We have metals and jewelry classes. We have printmaking. We have fiber arts. Um, yeah, tons of different kinds of things that people could kind of get creative and explore themselves as artists. Uh, Mark, I'm, I'm curious, what, what are some of the, the reactions that you see when people participate in the class versus when they come in from the time that they leave? Oh, because I feel like I'm already learning a lot that, of my That's short a time. great question. It's a great <laughs> question. A lot of them, a certain amount of people um, already have experience and they're looking to advance, but you always have a handful of people who are not even sure why they signed up and they're a little, maybe a little anxious about it. So I always have a heart for those people. And usually by the end of the first two hours, they're right at home. One of the things we emphasize, it's not about making a beautiful picture, it's about getting in touch with materials, and it really it familiarizes yourself with your, with your surroundings. Mm -hmm. If you paint long enough, everything begins to look more interesting to you. That's right, oh, I like that, definitely. All right, uh, Joseph, I wanna go back to you. Tell us yeah. about uh, other upcoming events and, and classes, installations that people can learn more about. Well, so we have our new section of Art for Life classes uh, happens in April, so okay. I'm registering for them now. We have Mark's watercolor class, we have um, a fiber arts shibori creations class, which is really super cool fabric dyeing. We have um, a mixed media class, which is new, we're just gonna pilot that one, and we have an Art for Life ceramics hand building class, so those are all kind of geared for that 55 and up demographic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Expand a little bit more on that uh, that art after, or excuse me, art, art for life. Yeah, yeah, art for life and what so, that's all about. So Ceramics, uh, another really unique art form. Yeah, super yeah. fun, super popular. Um, so art for life, they're classes that, as I said, they're geared for that specific age group. So they take into consideration like the kind of social goals, kind of giving opportunity for them, uh, students in those classes to kind of build community, um, collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, they're also kind of geared, uh, they're slightly shorter, they start a little bit later to kind of provide access. Um, they're reduced in tuition, so just kind of making that kind of program more accessible for that kind of demographic. Definitely, okay, what is the best resource to utilize? Obviously there's a lot happening over there at the museum. Yeah. What is the best way for people to find out more, sign up and register yeah. for classes? Yeah, the website is really the best place. So honolulumuseum.org forward slash art for life, or just they could go to the website and look for art classes in general. Um, anywhere from three years old all the way up to, you know, uh, any age. All right, well, there you go. Mark, Joseph, thank you so much for the time. Yeah, thanks. Make sure that you check our website as well, highnowdaily.com. This entire segment will be posted there. I mean, I'm learning a lot just being here right now, so make sure you check out the Honolulu Museum of Art. We'll be right back.
Hey, how's it? Aloha, gang, and welcome back to Hi Now Daily. I'm joined right now by some very special guests. We've got Staff Sergeant Jamaica Lago, Staff Sergeant Gage Smith joining us here in the studio. Welcome, man, Gage. Yeah, thank okay. you for having us. Glad, very glad to have you folks here, and mahalo nui. Thank you very much for your service, and, and we're excited to learn a little bit more about it. Um, it's recruitment season, which it kind of always is, but a big portion of that um, is this physical test that takes place, right? This is probably one of the first steps in the process. What is that all about? So to begin with, uh, if you do want to join, you end up you have to pass what's called the ACFT, which is basically like our Army uh, physical fitness test. Say it one more time. Army physical fitness. But it's the AC. It's called the ACFT. Yes. ACFT. Okay. Okay. And basically, when you do it, you're gonna have six different events. Okay. You're gonna have. You look I'm a little nervous. nervous. <laughs> look a little nervous. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're yeah, gonna have six we'll different events. Okay. You're gonna have um, the first ones will be the deadlift, which is what we will be showing you today. Okay. We're gonna have a hand release push up, okay. which will be the second event. Okay. And the other four events that you will not be seeing is the sprint drag carry, Oof. the plank. Okay the ball throw, okay. and then a two mile run. All right, well thank you very much for taking me out of those other four, but we have two here in the studio. Uh, Staff Sergeant Lago, you wanna walk, walk me through? What, what is the first thing over here? So this is what we call the deadlift, right? Okay. So I'm sure you're first. Okay. Sergeant Smith, so Sergeant Smith right here will demonstrate it for us. Okay. Um, but basically, make sure your back's straight. Okay. Right? Um, this is basically our minimum. So we have uh, 120 pounds. Um, 120 pounds? 120 pounds, okay. correct. So you will do a three-year repetition. Okay. So you got it. Oh, wow. He you're gonna go, you go down immediately. Okay. As soon as you hit the ground, you're up. Okay. As soon as you hit the ground, you're up. So how many of these do they have to do? Do we have three. three? Three. Okay. Let's see if I've got... <laughs> let's see if I've got three in me. I'm hoping that I do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Remember? Here? Yep. Back is okay? Yep. Yes. Head up. Yep. All the way up. Okay. One. Okay. Down. Now up again. Oh, two. two down. Okay. Up again. Okay. Three, and that's all. Wow. That's, uh, oh, that's harder than it looks. Trust me. All right. So I got three. What's, uh, what's process two? What's so the next process one? two, the second exercise we'll be showing you is the hand release push up. Okay. So basically, they'll tell you, you'll be down right here. You'll be like, come with you, Steph. So do it. Right. <laughs> You're going to be like, I mean, like, get ready. Okay. You're going to get up kind of like in a plank position. Okay. And we're going to need some space. Okay. So when they say get ready, you have two minutes. You have to get at least 10 push ups to pass. Okay. So you're gonna go all the way down, keep your hands in, arms out. Oh, all the way down on there. Yeah, okay. all the way down. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Then back in, up. That's okay. one. Okay. So we'll do 10. Okay. So nine more. Down, out, back, up. Two. Okay. Down, out, back, okay. up. Three. Three. Down, out, <laughs> back, up. Four. Four. Out, back, up. Five. Five. Out. Back, up, six, oh. up, up, seven, oh, okay. there you go, out, oh, oh, yep. back, <laughs> up, eight, eight, out, there you go, back, up, nine, oh man, I'm thinking more. about Japanese up. seafood right now, okay, <laughs> up, down, and then from there, okay. you like, you pass. Wow, okay, well, I mean, I got two, I got two of the four. Oh yeah, good Thanks, reps. man. Woo. Now, if okay, you okay. want to max it out, you do, you have to do, at least for males, okay. you have to do at least 61 in two minutes. 61 in two minutes? Yeah. Okay, dang. That is that is real deal. All right, so come back after the break because we're gonna learn, uh, learn a little bit more about the benefits of joining the United States Army, the recruitment process, and what it's all about. I'm gonna go take a water break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Woo!
I mean, you just gotta keep going. No matter how tired you are, you just gotta keep going and push through it. Keep motivated and just keep training for it because soon enough it's gonna be record and you gotta pass it. So you just gotta be prepared and ready. Whew. Uh, welcome back here into the studio. We are again joined by some very special guests. We have Staff Sergeant Jamaica Lago, Staff Sergeant Gage Smith from the United States Army. Very grateful to have you guys here on the show today. Uh, earlier, we went over a, a two, four, two, six, I guess, of the uh, physical requirements for going and signing up. But now let's talk a little bit about impact uh, and what impact uh, the United States Army has made in your life. And Staff Sergeant Lago, we'll start with you. Uh, yes, sir. So, my name is Steph Sergeant uh, Jamaica Lago, right? I'm actually from Lahaina, the, the island of Maui. Um, I joined right out of high school. So, um, through the Army benefits, I was able to um, go to college without student loan. And um, I was able to purchase my own house uh, everywhere the Army sends me. I know in Lahaina, it's kind of hard to like own your own house. So, we've, mm -hmm. we've been renting from houses to houses growing up. And um, yeah, I, it's glad, I'm glad that the Army benefits will, is out there to like help me out and my family. Absolutely. Uh, Staff Sergeant, I have to ask, given everything that happened last year, um, especially over there in Lahaina, um, how has doing what you do now even allowed you to go back and, and give back to, to the community and, and support Lahaina through this time? Uh, yes, sir. So um, during the um, what happened, it's very unfortunate, but um, I'm glad my family's okay. Um, through the Army programs, what we call the Army Emergency Relief, they were able to send me back home after the, after what happened with the fire, and I was able to like uh, bring some stuff for my family and help them out to um, you know with, with that process. Um, as of right now, um, they still they still going good, um, and then I'm just glad I'm, I'm out here um, trying to like uh, put myself out there for the young kids in the Haina as well uh, as well as in the Hawaii, um, putting out the Army benefits out there for for them to reach their goal as well. Um, like what the, what the army did for me. Absolutely, and we'll continue to find different resources uh, that were able to Kokua Maui and Lahaina as everything moves forward. Um, Staff Sergeant Smith, I'm gonna transition over to you. Uh, what kind of impact has the United States Army had on, uh, on your life? Well, for me, uh, I grew up in a very small town in Ohio, kind of like middle of nowhere. So I really didn't have much experience of like the outer world. So when I joined straight out of high school, um, I got scheduled, like I got stationed down in the south for a little bit. And then right after that, I went to Europe for about two years, where I traveled all over Europe in my free time, you know, had fun, and then I came here to Hawaii. I've been here for about three years. I'll be here for another three years. So for me, most importantly, um, it allowed me to get out and kind of like grow, and I got to experience this new cultures, new people, and I'm a big history guy. So for me, it was it's, it's been awesome. So. I want to move on a little bit uh, into the benefits now, the, the benefits of joining the United States uh, Army. Tell us about those. Yes, so um, we do have what we call the Army Active Duty and the Army Reserve. So both of that have a, um, both benefits. Um, however, the other one is full-time and the other one is part-time. So with the Army Reserve, right, um, you get to like uh, serve close to home if you chose to stay here in Hawaii or anywhere in the United States, uh, doing it part-time while continuing your full uh, education full-time or be able to continue your job that you currently have. Okay, interesting. Uh, Gage, expand a little bit more on that. So basically, let's just say you, for example, sir, mm -hmm. say you want to go Army Reserves. You could still do this job here, fulfill your career, go to school, and then once a month you'd go to like training or whatnot that mm -hmm. you get paid for. And from then on, like, like I said, you can get a whole degree done all the way up to your master's degree, Army will pay for. And then, like I said, most importantly, for a lot of people who do want to stay here on island, you still get to do your civilian job. Like you're still home, you're not really ever gone. And that's why I try to push people because we know family here in Hawaii is like very, very like strong. Important, yeah. So a lot of people don't want to leave and like we understand that. So it's like if you go reserves, you know, you can accomplish everything you ever wanted to do in life while getting to stay here in Hawaii. Absolutely. Uh, what is the best resource to utilize? If people want to go sign up, get more information about the United States Army uh, from the physical test to the recruitment process, uh, where do people go? So you can either visit your local recruiting station. We have about, I think, four or five here on the island and then all the other islands as well. And then not only that, you can just go to GoArmy.com or you can hit us up on our Instagram handles. Okay, absolutely. Staff Sergeant Lago, Staff Sergeant Smith, we're so grateful. Thank you both uh, so very much. Also, again, mahalo nui to, uh, for your service uh, and to all of our service members out there as well. You're watching High Now Daily. Before we head to break, though, we want to uh, tell you a little bit more about the Red Cross volunteers as we honor them this year. Take a look.
The American Red Cross is proud to congratulate our 2024 Volunteers of the Year. Each March is recognized as Red Cross Month, and we take the opportunity to recognize and thank the hardworking volunteers that make Red Cross relief efforts possible. Their work makes up over 90% of the Red Cross mission of saving lives, and they do this through emergency response, disaster preparedness and prevention, and assisting military service members. The 2024 Volunteer of the Year serving the island of Oahu is Ka'apuni Peters Wong. Many of Ka'apuni's relatives live on Maui, and after the wildfire swept through Lahaina, she was immediately deployed. Like so many others who went to the Valley Isle to help, she immediately took on multiple key roles. Her work secured supplies for survivors staying in Red Cross shelters. She worked with local businesses to purchase and coordinate the delivery of a wide variety of necessities that survivors needed to take the first small but important steps towards recovery. Within the Red Cross, Ka'apuni ensured that volunteers arriving from the continent were taken care of too. She not only set up staff shelters, she also contributed to the cultural introduction of those coming to the islands for the first time. Familiarizing them with common words, phrases, and ideas that could better establish a relationship with the people of Lahaina. Congratulations and thank you for all you do. Ka'apuni Peters Wong, the island of O'ahu's 2024 Red Cross Volunteer of the Year. It's always concerning to see your pet limping around the house, whether that be due to an injury or an underlying condition. Today, we're at the VCA University Animal Hospital so that we can get all the information we need to know if that does occur. Okay, now we are inside the VCA University. I'm here with Dr. Ryan Kasuga. This here is Lincoln. Lincoln boy, we call him Linky. Linky! All right, so today we are talking about lameness or what we all know as limping. When you see your pet limping around, that can't be good, right? Yes, definitely. So 
Lamus, we define it as a, a altered gait um, due to some structural or functional abnormality that can affect either one or multiple limbs. So some people will call it also favoring or guarding a limb. You could be favoring your right because your left is sore and that'll cause more problems, right? Yes, definitely. So if for instance, Linky here is lame on his front right limb, he might either have or present with a partial non-weepering limbus or toe touching limbus where they might just touch like this um, to the table or to the ground versus a non-weepering limbus where they hold the limb completely up and don't put any pressure or weight on that limb. Hey, you know, you just not knowing what's going on, you bring your pet into a VCA, maybe here in university, then what? So first we'll, we'll get a, a good thorough history from you guys. Um, sometimes the answer might be obvious right from the history itself. Um, if you're on a walk and maybe you notice that, I'll use Lincoln as an example, if he might have uh, um, stepped on a sharp piece of glass or um, on, on a, or was playing with an insect, maybe might have gotten a bee sting or a bite. Um, so uh, taking a thorough history is the most, uh, one of the most important things. Next, I'll do, uh, we'll conduct a physical exam. And that's where we can actually try to localize and find where the, the pain source is. So for instance, um, with Lincoln here, using his front right limb again, um, starting from his shoulder joint, I might fully extend and flex, and then going on to his elbow joint, same thing, flex and extend, and down towards his wrist. And wherever he might react um, will indicate where the pain source is. If we suspect it to be something more on the conservative side, uh, we can try a trial run of pain medication and rest. And we emphasize rest. So you can start off more conservative as such, or if you want, if the owner wants to, you can do a, take an x-ray, for instance, and uh, possibly get more radiographic evidence on where the, the lesion might be. For more serious things, we might require surgical intervention, um, such as uh, a fracture or broken bone. So yes, that is another form of treatment that we might have to implement if needed. For more information, where should people go? Um, you can call us here at VCA University in Manoa. Our number is 988-2111. All right, joining us here in the studio, we have Chaz Beasley. We're excited to talk story with you, and you've, you've lived quite a life, man. A, a man of many talents. I've had an adventure, yeah. Yeah, what, what brought you to, to Hawaii? I came to Hawaii in 1991 in the Coast Guard. I joined the Coast Guard to get to Hawaii. Um, and I stayed, I did 17 of my 20 years here. I've been here since 91, I, I didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. And then when I retired in 2008, like your previous guys, the Coast Guard for me was an escape from where I grew up because I grew up with nothing to where now I have a four acre farm, I, I do photography. Um, I got into this because of a great friend I met at the farmer's market named Shane Myers Photography, took me under his wing and like, here's how you do it, here's what you need. He sold me my first housing and from there, 13 years ago, I, I done this. I started doing, I decided it, to do Hawaiiana, the way you picture Hawaii in your head. All right, absolutely. So walk us through, what, what are we looking at over here and what are these printed on? Because so, this is... They're printed yeah. on aluminum, so they never fade, they never change colors, they're made to last Beautiful. forever, that's their thing. And then they kinda, I shoot my photography to go with the, the reflection of the aluminum, like the sunset, that's uh, summer solstice at Alihi Beach Park. Beautiful, and um, then over here I see koalaos. So that's my number one selling picture, because that's the way you picture Hawaii in your head. Yeah, you know what I mean, as a kid, you grow up, you're like, that's the way you see it all. So people that used to live here, like, number one selling picture in Vegas. So if anyone lives in Vegas, yeah. that's the picture they order, because that's what they want to have, yeah. 100%. But I try to do, like with fish eye, I try to give them a little bend. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I got lucky that um, I'm one of the like four or five people that know where the secret turtle spot is on the North right. Shore where we can go like Clark Little's another one. Mm -hmm. uh, Shane Myers had showed me and um, we can go out there and shoot Honu and just stand there. You don't have to do anything except stand there Beautiful. and they come to you. All right, so now how does this transition go from a photographer to farmer and now you're, you know, you're devising a very cool way that not only do you support local ag, ag but also, you know, giving these, uh, these produce, selling these produce and making sure we get local ingredients in our food. So we switch. I got lucky and uh, me and my wife 10 years ago bought a house on the beach right at Rock Piles. Mm -hmm. So we got a beach house just off the alleyway, but it wasn't my dream home. It was 720 square feet for worth a million dollars. So we got it cheap. We sold it to Heather Brown, the photographer. We took that money and bought ag land in Wailua and we custom built a house. So I um, developed the land over the last eight years by hand, physically with chainsaws, weed whackers. 
we put in a 40 by 60 foot greenhouse and we attended um, Go Farm Hawaii, the University of Hawaii's program where oh, great program. they train you yeah. to be a farmer. So we did it as a team. And um, so now we grow beets, tomatoes, and carrots organically. I take in uh, rescue goats from people. I started out with five. I have somewhere between 50 and 60 goats. I sell wow. them as pets to other farms as like starters. So if you want a milk and goat, but I just don't sell them for food. Gotcha. Um, I have about 200 chickens, probably 150 of them are roosters because people in the neighborhoods, want to, they want to get rid of them. I take them in because I own four acres and we own property on the jungle line. So for us, they eat all the bugs. I'm curious, man. So between having a full-fledged work, working farm and doing all of the photography, where do you find the time? Um, I'm very hyper, if you haven't noticed already. This <laughs> yeah, is me at 54. Is... I'll be 55 right. in a couple years. I'm surprised my wife tolerates I'm... me. I'm like, well, it, yeah, I'll tell you what, though. I'm in bed by 7. Like, yeah. I, I'm up at 4 in the morning. But i tell you what, um, I feel like I'm living the dream. I get to take pictures. I get to live in Hawaii. I get to travel inner island. And I get to raise goats and chickens. I don't have to supervise anybody. Definitely. All right, Chaz, let's uh, tell all, all of our viewers out there, how do people go and check you out, man? Um, is there an Instagram they can go to? And you're at the farmer's markets, too. Which there one? is. So uh, Chaz Beasley Photography on Instagram. But the best way to find me and come see me is at the Aloha Farm Lovers in Kakako on Saturdays and on Sundays in Kailua. It's Aloha Farm Lovers from 8 to 12. Come hungry, come eat, and then check out my photos because they look great on TV, look right on the website, but man, when you see them in person, they're, yeah. they're, they're, what, they're what you want. These things are stunning. Make sure you go ahead and check it out. You're watching Hi Now. We will be right back after the break. Check them out, gang. Chaz Beasley, he's making it happen. Living the dream. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to High Now Daily. Last night, Talk Story host McKenna Maduli had a special episode focusing on welcoming back visitors to West Maui and supporting their journey to economic recovery. Take a look. We have a very intentional hour planned for you as we explore Makako Maui, a new initiative from the Hawaii Tourism Authority to help Maui move forward with deep aloha and respect. At our workplace, at the old Lahaina Luau, it's family. Yeah. Some may have lost their physical home, their house, 
but when they come to work, that is another home to them. Yeah. For Maui, for anybody from Maui, just I hope we can remember like what it was like for that week following the fire when we all rallied, when we all came together and everybody was doing something. They are, are, are capable folks and they're ready to get back to work as you've heard from some of our, our speakers today. Yeah. The community rising and coming together yeah. and bringing things together and all, all that was a magical time for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And it was, um, some of these pictures that we're looking at, we're, we're, it was yeah. really tough. Yeah, and I think, you know, as we put this together, I think it was important for us to honor what happened and mm -hmm. then also talk about the healing process of, of all of this. I think, you know, if we stick to those basics of our roots and our values from our ohana, that, you know, we can go a long way. I agree. And I think, we can know, all be stewards of change and be a part exactly. of this together. Now more than ever, we really need to do tourism in a way that speaks to what we're doing with destination management, keeping the brand marketing focus, but it's all about being sustainable. It's all about a regenerative type of tourism. Keeping the best of what we do today and going into the future and making sure people understand that we love our home. Right. And when people visit us here, we want them to believe it better than they found it. And in return, we have to show that aloha. We have to welcome them. Mm -hmm. And that's why Makau Kau, it's all about timing. The timing is right now to put out this kind of message. When I sit down and I, I get to play for them, it, it's kind of bittersweet because they feel really bad. Uh, but it's sweet because I can help and I can help to kind of bring some light to them with the music. You know, That's music, right. everybody says music is a, a healer. Yep, it is a um, healer. And so you're a healer too through that voice of yours, brother. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, brother. Wow, thank you. Take care of each other, you guys. This was such a powerful time to be together, and I really am grateful for everyone coming together as we are a community and as we help Maui be Makakao Maui. So mahalo nui, everybody, and we'll see you next time on Talk Story. Wow, such an incredible show. And in case you missed it, the entire episode, the entire episode will air again on Tuesday, March 5th, starting at 9 p.m. on KGMB. Hey, we want to recap real quick uh, with a little bit about what we did with Chef Roy Yamaguchi upstairs. Now, the Japan seafood promotion, this is going to be incredible. It's being put on by Jetro. It's happening from March 8th to the 22nd at more than 30 partner restaurants and shops in Honolulu. Again, they're going to feature fresh seafood imported from Japan, and each restaurant will have special menus featuring Japanese seafood, best of the best, freshest of the fresh. Visit japanfoodhawaii.com for all of the details. Hey, looking ahead to tomorrow, we're going to have a live challenge accepted between Rachel Picaro and Lauren Teruya. They're going to they're gonna go head to head, but I'm going to fill you in on the details later. Plus, we need help for our college students and soon to be college students, in fact, how you can get help with the FAFSA. I benefited from that. Also, we get a look at yours truly, located at the AC Hotel by Marriott Honolulu. They just had an incredible grand opening that took place over the weekend as well. Everybody was out there. It's one of the newest spots over there in downtown. They've got a reimagined look to the place. It's good food, great central location as well. AC Hotels by Marriott, again, uh, a lot to look forward to in tomorrow's show as well. Mahalo Nui for watching. Hi now, Rachel will be back on the show tomorrow. Tomorrow. And again, that challenge accepted. They're going to go toe to toe. Lauren versus Rachel. We're going to post something on our high now. You got to vote for one. I'm not going to tell you exactly what the challenge is, but it's going to be good. You're not going to want to miss it. It's taking place 3 p.m. on high now, K5 and KGMB. Aloha, and we'll see you tomorrow.